like and subscribe, and leave a comment below. The Beastmaster and the Ultimate Predator The dense forest was alive with the sounds of creatures unseen. Among the towering trees and twisted vines, a predator that haunted the nightmares of even the bravest of hunters. In the heart of the wilderness, where no human had dared to tread, I moved with the grace of a ghost. My name is Aiden Rocker, the legendary Beastmaster, known across the realms for my unmatched skill in taming the wildest of beasts. But today, I wasn't here to tame. Today, I was a hunter. My prey was no ordinary beast. It was the Razor Lash, a creature of myth, said to have scales harder than steel and claws that could rip stone. Villages whispered of its terror, and kings offered fortunes for its head. Yet no one who had sought it had ever returned. I paused. I knelt, placing my hand on the ground, feeling the vibrations of the forest. The Razor Lash was close, very close. I could almost feel its breath on my neck. As I moved deeper into the forest, Memories of my training flashed through my mind. My master had always said, To hunt the beast, you must become the beast. I had taken those words to heart, learning the ways of the wild, the language of the animals, and the secrets of the land. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that seemed to come alive. My eyes adjusted to the dark, my every sense heightened. I heard a low growl a sound that sent chills down my spine. It was the razor lash, and it was watching me. I knew I couldn't face the beast head on. I needed a plan, a way to outsmart the creature that had eluded hunters for centuries. I climbed a nearby tree, hoping to get a better view of my surroundings. From my vantage point, I saw a clearing up ahead, the perfect place for an ambush. I normally don't like to kill animals, it goes against who I am and how I was brought up. My life has always been about understanding and respecting the creatures of the wild, but this is different. This animal kills for pleasure, leaving its human victims strewn along roads to terrify the people of the nearby villages. It terrorizes without reason, sowing fear and chaos. When the call for a hunter went out, I was the only one who showed up for the job. I felt an obligation to help the poor townsfolk, to bring them peace and safety, even if it meant going against my own principles. Too many good people have died. It's time to put an end to this. I had an old shirt, one that had seen better days. I had asked the villagers to rub their scents on it that morning, hoping to use it to attract the beast with the familiar smells of its past victims. Carefully, I placed the shirt in the middle of the clearing, arranging it just so. Then, I found a concealed spot at the edge of the clearing and settled in to wait. The forest around me grew quiet, as if holding its breath for the inevitable confrontation. Hours passed, but my patience was rewarded when I saw a pair of glowing eyes in the darkness. The razor lash had taken the bait, moving cautiously into the clearing. I watched the beast, its massive form illuminated by the moonlight. The razor lash was even more terrifying than the legends described. Its scales shimmered like polished armor, and its eyes burned with an intelligent fury. I knew this was it. This was the moment, a true test of my grit. I leaped from the tree, landing silently behind the beast. The night air was cool against my skin, but my focus was razor sharp. Each step I took was calculated. I moved with the precision of a shadow, with my weapons at the ready, prepared to strike. As I closed in on the razor lash, the sheer size and power of the creature became more apparent. Its scales, a formidable armor that had turned countless weapons to dust, glistened in the moonlight. The beast's breathing was steady and deep, a low rumble that resonated through the ground beneath my feet. With the thrill of the hunt coursing through my veins, I advanced. Just as I prepared to strike, something caught my eye, a flicker of movement in my peripheral vision. I paused, with my instincts screaming at me to stay vigilant, hidden in the shadows, Barely visible against the dark foliage were two smaller creatures. They were nestled close to the razor lash. It took me a moment to realize that these were the beast's offspring. The realization hit me like a bolt of lightning, forcing me to reassess the situation. The razor lash was not just a mindless killer. It was a parent, fiercely protecting its young. The two smaller creatures were almost identical to their mother, 
albeit much smaller and less menacing. They huddled close to her, seeking comfort and safety in her presence. The sight of them brought a surge of unexpected emotions, compassion, empathy, and a deep understanding of the creature's motivations. My grip on my weapon tightened as I struggled with my instincts and the new understanding of the situation. I had come here to kill a monster, but now I saw a mother defending her family. The lines between predator and protector blurred, and I found myself questioning everything I had believed about the razor lash. The hunt was no longer just about survival or a test of my skills. It had become a complex moral dilemma, challenging my very principles as a beast master. I lowered my weapon, taking a step back. In that moment, I understood that the true beast was not the creature standing before me, but the fear and ignorance that had driven so many to hunt it. The real enemy was the misconception that anything we don't understand must be destroyed. With a newfound respect, I slowly backed away, making sure every movement was non-threatening. I was no longer a hunter. I was an intruder who had overstayed his welcome. The razor lash watched my every step, its eyes never leaving me, its body tense and ready to strike if I made a wrong move. But I kept my pace steady and calm, showing the beast that I meant no harm. The forest seemed to hold its breath as I retreated, the usual sounds of the wild eerily silent, as if the entire ecosystem was witnessing this moment of understanding. As I disappeared into the forest, the razor lash remained where it stood, a silent guardian over its young. The further I got, the lighter my heart felt. The anger and tension that had been driving me melted away, replaced by a profound sense of peace. I had not just spared a life, I had chosen to break the cycle of violence and fear. This decision marked a turning point in my life, redefining what it meant to be a beast master. When I returned to the village, the people were puzzled. They had expected a trophy, a gruesome proof of the beast's death, but I brought back a different kind of story. I spoke of understanding and respect for the wild, of the delicate balance that sustains life in the forest. My tale was one of enlightenment where the so-called monster was a guardian protecting its own. The villagers were grateful, though it took time for them to fully grasp the significance of my encounter. Gradually, word spread, and my legend grew, not as the greatest hunter, but as the beast master who chose to understand rather than destroy. The forest, once a place of fear and danger, became a symbol of harmony and respect. From that day forward, it remained at peace a testament to the lesson that every creature, no matter how fearsome, deserves to be seen for what it truly is. In the end, I learned that true mastery was not in conquering the wild, but in understanding it. This understanding brought a sense of purpose greater than any hunt or battle ever could. Through empathy and respect, I found a deeper connection to the world around me, one that transcended the primal instincts of fear and aggression. My journey as a beastmaster had transformed from one of domination to one of coexistence, and through this transformation, I discovered the true essence of my calling. This is not goodbye, nor the end. Until the story continues, my friends, be an rocker.